Minneapolis St. Paul, the fan. If you want to chime in on what's happening with your favorite KFAN shows, you can make your voice heard on the Brad Sean Bryant KFAN text line. Just let us know what you have to say by texting your message to 64686. That's 64686. Standard text message and data rate supply. All right, segment number two with John Krasinski, Johnny Athletic on the Connecticut Water Systems Hotline. Luigi Lou Nanny will make his weekly appearance. It's a holiday week, so we're squeezing people in when we can. Glenn Mason. I listed as doubtful this week with non-COVID illness. I just got a text to the Bradshaw and Brian KFN text line wondering if Mace was going to be on today. He is not. Uh, he texted me last night, said he's been sick for a few days, so there will be no Mace in my face, but we will get Johnny Athletic for a few more minutes. The Vikings starting quarterback for the border battle New Year's Eve against the Packers should be... I am open to anything at this point. <laughs> I'll, I'll just say Jaron Hall. Um, yeah just to try something different. I would not blame Kevin O'Connell for, tr- for going Nick Mullins one more time and just giving him a shot and then pulling him if he makes a silly interception, a, a bad mistake, something like that. Um, but you know, look, we, we've seen what the accident-prone Mullins does to this defense, to you know, kind of putting this team in difficult positions. So... Given how unlikely or what a long shot their playoff odds are right now, I, I would be fine rolling the dice and putting the rookie out there and see if he gives you something. I will say you are correct. That's the answer. That's the answer. You can't put Nick Mullins out there. You just can't. And I get it. He's the veteran. He's the guy that apparently runs the offense closest to what you want in terms of being able to know it and throw it like you want it to run. Because I know I've been reading some stuff that O'Connell said the last few days about well we're you know in terms of the explosives that we're getting it's pretty good, yeah. But if he gets sacked, his first instinct is I'm just going to throw it at a guy and hope that he doesn't yeah. catch it. So that's where I just yeah. I can't in a season that tur- that has been marred by turnovers, Johnny. I can't in good faith go this is our best option. And I'll be honest, I do want to see what the kid has a little bit because we do have that ever looming decision on what to do at the end of the season with Kirk Cousins and whoever is going to be the quarterback next season. So I'm with you 100%. Well, and here's the other thing about it, Garzi, is we have seen that Nick Mullins can come off of the bench and play decently and move the ball and settle in and not need, you know, a, a bunch of warm-ups or things to get into the rhythm of the game and, and give you a chance. Uh, we don't know that about Jaron Hall. So, I mean, you know, you could you could argue that, hey, start Jaron Hall. If he does struggle, if it really is terrible and, and, and nothing is working, then you can bring Mullins in as the safety blanket and just try something different. I think it's, it might be a little bit harder if you start Mullins, he throws a pick or two, maybe the Packers are up, uh, you know, 10 nothing or something like that or, or 14 nothing, and then you bring Hall in in adverse situation like that and, and thrust him into it, uh, that, that could be asking a little too much of, of the rookie. So um, you, it, it doesn't mean that whatever, whatever decision you make doesn't have to be permanent through the entire game, but I do think that Mullins is a little more equipped to come in in the middle of a game and, and, and make something happen versus – uh, doing that to Hall and putting him in that in that kind of a situation. Do you read into any of the uh, Justin Jefferson comments? And to catch people up, uh, JJ said this this week, talking about you know, the just the ups and the downs of the quarterback spot this year. I really think it just goes to show the rest of the world what the type of player Kirk is. At the end of the day, this is a tough league. You know, not everybody is meant for this job, so it is tough not having number eight out there. The captain he is the leader he is, he's a great player. Do you read anything into that in terms of what J.J. thinks about the future here and how tied that might be to Kirk Cousins? Yeah, I mean, I, I do think that it's, it's something that needed to be said and heard by probably Vikings fans. I mean, I think you've probably seen it uh, a little bit recently, Guardsy. I certainly have in my social media mentions and stuff, is that I do think that there's a growing appreciation for what Kirk Cousins brings to the table just as a as a maybe not elite quarterback but certainly as a as a good quarterback who can do a lot of things and cover up a lot of issues that 
other quarterbacks, lesser quarterbacks like Nick Mullins, like Josh Dobbs, like maybe even Jaron Hall, um, cannot do. And so I think that there has been a growing appreciation for him among Vikings fans. I also do think that this is the star wide receiver who is again going to go into contract negotiations in this offseason who is saying, uh, I want a real quarterback here. And he deserves a real quarterback. You look at the effort that he gave in that game uh, on Christmas Eve and just how he threw everything out there. Uh, th- a player of his caliber deserves someone capable and competent to throw him the ball. Mm-hmm. And he was open on that last play that nu- that the wounded duck out of Mullen's hands was intercepted. Like, <laughs> yes, he was. He did his job. And so maybe even Justin Jefferson needed a little reminder for how good Kirk Cousins actually is. I'm not sure if that's the case or not, but I do think it is a message being sent to the organization, to Vikings fans that, hey, we can do a heck of a lot worse than Kirk Cousins, and there better be a real plan in place for what we're going to do this going into next season because there's just no way that they can go in with some combination of probably Hall, Mullins, or or, or some other second, third round draft pick that is going to be your quarterback. He wants he wants something someone who is capable of making all the throws the way that Kirk Cousins is. Will you be in attendance on New Year's Eve at US Bank Stadium? I, I think I will be, Garcia. Yeah, I was Ooh. mulling it over. I'm wow. not sure I wasn't sure about it, but um I did skip the Lions game to be with the fam on Christmas Eve. This is Vikings Packers. There's still a lot on the line for it. Yep. It's New Year's Eve. I'm older now, um, so I, I don't have these crazy plans <laughs> right. for New Year's Eve like I used to do back in the day. Right. So um, I, I think I'm going to be there, and I think I'm going to ride this thing out and see what happens. All right, well, good luck, because I'm worried about the, the level of drunkenness on New Year's Eve with Vikings Packers. I know you're protected you know, in the press box, but yeah. just be careful out on those skyways and those streets, man. I think it's going to be ugly. But that's just me. It, it 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 could very well be. I'm hoping for an entertaining game because yes. I I celebrate drunkenness among fans as long as it's not just embarrassing, right. puking on yourselves kind of stuff and, yeah. and getting mean with it. Yep. But if it's an entertaining game and Vikings fans can get after it and 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 feel good and get that buzz going and 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 whip it into a frenzy in there, uh, more power to them. I hope they uh, I hope they have a blast with it. Good luck to all of you. I'll be listening on the fan. Thanks, Johnny. I appreciate you, man. All right. See you, Garcia. That Bye. is John Krasinski on the Connecticut Water Systems Hotline. We head from Johnny to Luigi, from the Wolves and the Vikings to the Wild. Lunani makes it. There's a This is the fan. Yeah. <laughs> Well, she sneaks around the world from Bay up to Carolina. She's a sticky finger filcher from Berlin down to Belize. She'll take you for a ride on a slow boat to China. Tell me where in the world is Lou Nanny. Well, he got his quota of in-studio visits in. He had one more that he owed us, I think, in 2023. I think he got that out of the way last Tuesday. I wasn't here to witness it. I'm pretty sure he was in studio with Dan last week, and that was the number of commitments. So he's not here today, but he is on the Connecticut Water Systems Hotline. Brought to you by Kemp's. Is that fair, Louie? You had one more you owed us, and then it was, I'm getting back on a plane after Christmas? That's right. We we had uh, guests and gifts for you from <laughs> Kemp's uh, Ice Cream. That's right. They brought you some packages. I hope you picked it up. You you didn't. You were a no show. I I was gone. Yeah, I was a non factor last week. I think it's still in the freezer. I did get a text about that. So thank you for that. I'm pretty sure it's there. Or Dan took it, which is fine. That's good. Um, but Merry no, Christmas. We, we put it in the freezer unless uh, somebody took it. <laughs> well, it's very possible. There's a lot of dishonest people. Brett confirms it's. I in know there. where it is. It's right. there. Well, now I'm excited about it. Um, yeah, how'd your Christmas go, be. Luigi? How'd everything Great. go? It went very well. Very well. We had. Uh, you know, a lot of big dog, a lot of ice cream. It was terrific. I love it. Um, let's start with the wild. I, mean, I want to talk a little gophers before we're done as well here in our long segment here in the four. Um, when Bill Guerin made the move to let go of Dean Evison and bring in John Hines, one of the things he talked about was if we can get ourselves above water by Christmas, then I feel like we're going to be in a decent spot. They have done that. Um, do you feel like they're in a decent spot, and how did they get to that decent spot? Well... 
they're in a decent spot because now in their playoff picture, and that was a great move. And their record uh, was ten and three since Heinz came in, which is most wins or and the most points. They're tied for the most points in the NHL in that span. So they made a tremendous jump, and that puts them in a playoff position. But the one thing about that playoff position, there's seven teams going for two two positions. So what you know is you're lucky you're in there, and it's going to be a dogfight to the end of the year. It was a great move, and if they can continue or have another nice streak like this, you know they'll be really sitting pretty. From where they came from to where they are today is just a tremendous move. And what has stood out about the difference from where they were to where they are now? I know I'm sure it's a Scoring lot. Scoring goals, and yeah. <laughs> Scoring goals and more consistent goaltending. So you, you have uh, both of them. But to get that, you had that the defense would move the puck up quicker. Uh, transition game was faster and and, and much uh, quicker reactions to play. So it was just better team play. The three games before the change was made, they started playing pretty good, but they weren't scoring any goals. And you felt like if you just could, you know, open the tap there that. Water would start running, they'd start scoring, and, and fortunately they did. Has the tap been open for Kaprizov? It certainly looks like that. Boy, he's <laughs> been on fire. He's He's been just so sharp. And, and, and he was a good case in point. He was just missing in that, just missing some chances that he normally puts in. He wasn't quite as accurate as he normally is. And now it's just like he uh, he gets the puck when he shoots and he knows where it's going. And fortunately for the Wild, it's going in, in the net quite a bit. So if you have a question for Luigi, Bradshaw and Brian, KFN text line is 64686. Uh, Wild back in action tonight, part of the reason why we are out a little bit earlier. Um, did you know, I mean, that was the big topic for the first couple of months is what is going on with Kaprizov? And, you know, there was a lot of theories. Is it because he was injured? Is it because he's just not coming back? Is he currently injured? There were a lot of those theories. Did you, do you think there's anything dramatically different with him the last, you know, couple of weeks? And obviously, you know, the Boston stuff was, was remarkable. Is there, or is it just that a couple of shots went in and sometimes that's all it takes? Yeah, I was one of the guys that don't feel he was suffering, as some of them were trying to, you know, say that maybe that's the reason for his lack of production. I really feel that he was playing hard. Uh, he was just a little off early on, especially with his passes. He wasn't as effective with the way he moves the puck normally, and boy, you could see it now. The guy is an unbelievable passer when he's on. He makes even the no look pass right on the blade it, and, and hard and fast. So if you're going to be in the ice with him, you ought to always be ready to expect the puck because you never know it might be coming to you. And nobody does know where it's going except him. But, uh, he just, he just seemed, as the club was going a little better at the beginning there, he seemed to be getting quicker on the things he was doing and then just felt like he was going to score, and he started putting them in, and as soon as he got one or two, then you could just see the guy was on fire. I mean, he dominated games, and, and he was dangerous throughout. He could, he could have had a lot more goals than he's got right now. The goalies have to make some great saves on him. So if he continues that, it's going to be a good sign for the Wild. Are you surprised that Brock Faber has become as important as he already is for this club? Yeah, very surprised. And I'm saying that... Uh, even though I love them at the university, you don't expect a rookie to come in there like he has and be as dominant as exactly, he Exactly, right. And play as much as he has. If anybody tells you they're not surprised, they're, they're kidding themselves. <laughs> because he's coming in, he's playing like an all-star in his first year. Yeah. And he's playing as much as anybody in the league, and he's playing as effective as anybody in the league. So, you know, guys could... When, when they made the trade, uh, you might remember, Justin, one of the callers called in and says, what do you think of the deal? And I said, well, you know, it's tough to lose Fiala, but he couldn't be signed. There was no cap room. So I think Bill made a real good move. That I, I like the deal he made. He got a first round. He got Brock Faber. And the guy said, well, do you think Faber's that important? I said, well, all I know is I know in my heart he's going to play. I don't know how good he's going to be. Right. And I did know how good he's going to be. Now, realistically and honestly speaking, he, Bill Guerin, would not trade Faber e even up for Fiala. Right. You don't trade a top defenseman even up for 
uh, Fiala, even though he's productive. There's no way in the world would he make that deal. Well, here's uh, your guy, uh, John Bucigras, from a week ago. This is before he even played. He's now, it's like, you know, he's playing like 32 minutes a night, and essentially because they don't have a lot of other options because of some right. injuries. But Bucci says, if Minnesota makes the playoffs, I think Brock Faber will win Rookie of the Year. Huge, meaningful, productive minutes. And Russo retweets and says he should, shutting down stars nightly with Brodeen and Spurgeon hurt, absolutely dominating one of the, one of the best defensemen in the league, not just rookies. So how has he been able to do it? I mean, what stands out about his game that has allowed him to just transition so seamlessly into this thing? Well, there's so many things that stand out. His skating is elite. His 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 brain is elite. He, he plays the position so well and so smartly. His sticks in the passing lanes. He he. I, I saw him beat once this year. He very rarely ever gets beat. He moves the puck. He's moving the puck better with the Wild than he did with the Gophers, and he certainly is handling it more with the Wild than he ever tried with the Gophers. That's what's been the biggest surprise to me, and that's why I'm saying if anybody told you he's going to be this good. If you watch him play with the Wild, he was always a tremendous defenseman. I mean, with the Gophers, he was always a tremendous defenseman, but he wasn't a puck-carrying, puck-moving defenseman. He wasn't even on the power play there. So that's the biggest change in his game, is his ability to get the puck out real quickly and smartly and and put it on the stick. And by the way, he's been outstanding along the boards with the puck. Under pressure, he makes little turns, little swivels. He dumps it off where he, he's able to escape the four checker. He's doing things much better and much more than I saw him in college hockey. So he has just been sensational. Well, and I think about when Dan asked you about Vinny signing with the Wild and you said, I feel like I'm living a dream. I mean, w- w- the great picture from him a couple of years ago is he's he's on the glass. I think Kaprizov had just scored a goal and he's wearing his gopher sweatshirt and he's just cheering like a rube. I mean... He blew the Gallahorn at the Vikings game the other day. I mean, this, yeah. <laughs> this just must be like this. You want to talk about a dream? I mean, he just must feel like he's floating. No wonder he can play 30 minutes a night against some of these stars, right? I mean, because this is just as good a story as you can find right now. He's got to be saying to himself, am I dreaming? Please don't wake up. <laughs> this can't be. I, I, I mean, it, it works for good, and he's, and he's done an eyeglass deal. You know, yep. for, with one of the companies. And by the way, you know, maybe he's just doing that because he's like Clark Kent, going Superman, going to Booth, take your glasses off, become <laughs> Superman. But he's really been uh, just uh, a joy to watch, and he's been, for the while, just a godsend. Because, as you had pointed out earlier, when you got Brodin and Spurgeon out, you really think you're going to fall apart. You got your two best defensemen out normally, and now who turns out? <laughs> Favor comes in and plays like they were playing and even better in some, sometimes. We mentioned earlier the goaltending has been good since John Hines took over as well. So, and I, it was uh, some good stuff from Mark Andre Fleury as he continues to rack up wins and, and rack up, you know, accolades and all these things. Uh, guys have written a lot about it here. And, and he even said, Hey, I want our team to win. Like, obviously, I want the net as much as possible, but Gustafson's playing really well. And so I'm cool with that. I'll get my work in. And when it's, it's time for me to go, I'll go. Um, but what have you seen from Gus Bus here in the last you know month and change or so since the move was made, especially as as you said, better goaltending all around? Well, it seems like he's first of all got more confidence and he's positioned himself well and he feels uh, you know the things he's doing are 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 good. He feels very confident in in the net, seeing pucks, getting to pucks, and and that confidence just makes him sharper on shots, on passes, you know, things that he has to react to. And I think that, uh, you know, that was the start of it. But I want to tell you, Fleury came in and he's played some four, five games in a row now where he's, he had just one where he gave a lot of goals. He's, he's, he's playing the kind of game that he's got to be thinking to himself, I don't know if I want to retire after this year. <laughs> right. If they don't want me here, maybe I'll go somewhere else. And a while, I've got to be thinking, well, we got our goaltender in Gustafson. We also got a great prospect, and Wall well said who should play for sure. And he's got one more year in that contract where we could do what we want for him, and we can't lose him. Do we? We want to go back to Flurry if he continues to play this way and say we're interested in having you. You got to take a pay cut because we we can be. Get another goaltender up here for nine hundred twenty-five thousand. 
So if you come for $2 million, maybe we'll spend another year. So that's what I think's got to be going through everybody's head right now, even though there's a long way to go. You can't help but thinking about that. What is it like to have a guy like that in the room, not just because of the player he is, although it's probably connected, but you just you, you hear how people talk about him and the way and the pranks that he pulls and all the different things that are going on. Like I just have to imagine, especially like no one cares about that when the team's not winning. You know, you can't steal a guy's clothes right. when you've lost five games in a row and you're about to fire your coach. But when you're winning, it just feels like that's one of those things that just continues to, to keep the vibes good in the room. No, and it doesn't seem like anybody's better at that than Flower. Well, he certainly is the one keeping the cohesiveness there and leading it. And sometimes it gets expensive because, as you said, you don't do it when you're losing, but you're winning. He pulls the pranks, and the last one he did was he nailed Duhame's shoes to the floor. <laughs> so he went put his foot, and he couldn't lift his foot, his foot up because it was nailed to the shoe was nailed to the floor. And it gets a little expensive. Now you got to get a new pair of shoes. <laughs> but but uh, I guess they, they look forward to seeing what he comes up with. Well, when you get a guy like that in the locker room, uh, he really keeps it light. He keeps the the humor. He keeps the vibe there, and and uh, it, it, it's it's very effective. It helps continue to win games because you're you're looser when you go on the ice. You you, you feel better than you did. You, you're not as tight because of the things that are going on around you. Best prankster you ever played with. Well, probably Tommy Reed. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, he'd do some bad things, but the worst he ever did, our coach was Charlie Burns. We were in St. Louis. We went out to dinner, and he bought a couple extra lobster, and he went back, <laughs> got the key to Charlie Burns' room. <laughs> and he tell you, in those days, it wasn't so hard to get another room's key if That's you right. were the team, you know. Yeah. And he put the lobsters in Charlie Burns' bed. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it... Uh, It'd be a little scary thing when you put your feet in there under the covers and <laughs> lobsters are crawling over you. But uh, and he used to love going under the table. You know, you you wouldn't see him. You know, you're not paying attention. He's gone under the table and he right. didn't catch up on everybody's shoes and stuff like that. He, Tommy would love to do things. One of the guys, it might have even been Tommy Hartman. I was Sid used to always travel with, with a tape recorder. Yep. And uh, he'd come in, sit down, and talk for a second, and he put the tape recorder beside him, and it disappeared. And then he started running around the locker room, angry at everybody, swearing at everybody, and and it just so happens our trainer Doc Rose was putting some towels back in in the cooler to cool them off, you know, for cold packs, and the tape recorder was in there, and <laughs> Doc says, "Here it is, here it is." And said, what's going on? And somebody says, hot news, just trying to cool it off. <laughs> well, and the best thing, like, when's the last time you played with Tommy Reed? I mean, how many years ago? And you guys still have that, like, whenever I've seen you two together, like, it's like you're back in the locker room, right? I mean, those are the relationships that yeah. where it just never ends. Like, it just, the uniform might come off, but the camaraderie piece of it never, never stops, which I always think is great. Well, I never stops because we're always leery. The other guy pulling stuff yeah. on him because I've done something to him too. So, yep. it, you know, yeah, we we finished playing in '78, and he, he f- finished at the end of the season when I was general manager and coach because of the rash. Yep. and uh, that's a long time ago. But we <laughs> we're still leery. <laughs> you have to be one. Well, yeah, I remember when you pretended like you broke your arm, uh, banging it on the XL Energy uh, press box, and we had Dan going on that for a little while. You borrowed a cast yeah. and put that in. I mean, sometimes you just got to keep people on your toes, you know? You got to make things interesting to get through the day. Yeah, that's right. It makes time go by faster, and you have uh, a good time doing it. The reaction's everything. To watch people when they get they get fooled or taken real bad, it's just, it's just really something. It just... You know, um, when you're in a locker room, we used to have, you know, everybody knew Parisi hated yep. hated bugs and cockroaches. That, <laughs> and somebody put the cockroach in a skate, and before you knew it, you had to watch. He threw the skate right across the room, Yeah, you know, where Tommy and I were sitting. <laughs> you know, and just thought maybe it was us, but it wasn't that time. Right. But everybody's vulnerable. Uh, last thing, it's the Wild and Red Wings tonight, and Patrick Kane now playing for Detroit. Um, that's a name, speaking of you, making you want to throw a shoe across, uh, a skate across the ice if you're a Wild fan. Uh, certainly he has a, a history against the Wild organization going on back all those years. You know, We're talking 9, 10 years now at this point. Um, what does Kane have left, and what do these Red Wings present tonight for the Wild? Well, I think he answered himself. He was third star 
the, uh, last week when Kaprizov was first star, and I mm-hmm. watched a couple of his games, and he's scoring goals and he's moving pucks, setting guys up. He's he's looking sharp. It took him well, you know. He had that operation, so he's got to get healed. And and then when he after he was healed, ready to play, he had a, I think it was about five teams after him trying to sign him. Detroit had a lot of cap space. They were able to get the job done, and he's been a real big good addition for that team because uh, they start off real good. They looked like they were going to take off, then they had a little setback. Now they're they're back in a groove fighting for a playoff position. Happy New Year, Luigi. Good to hear your voice as always. I'm sorry I missed you last week, and I'll catch up with you when you come back in March, but we'll talk to you next week. Can you do that and get your eight dog and ice cream? That's right. Brett just, love it. He just went okay, to make buddy. sure it's there. Thanks, Luigi. Thanks. Have a good night. Okay, bye-bye. Lou Nanny on the Connecticut Water Systems Hotline brought to you as always by Kemp's. Jair Alexander, is it better to have no cornerbacks or is it better to have Jair Alexander? It's something we're going to examine. On the fan. Minnesota Credit Unions and iHeartRadio are spreading the word about how credit unions take your money further. When you see the Minnesota Credit Union's iHeart car out of station events, show us you have a credit union credit or debit card when a $25 gift card from us. Get them while supplies last. Pat Kessler will join in the 5 o'clock hour. Guards you for Barrero the next couple of days. Brett Blakemore here as well. That's the voice you just heard. The Bradshaw and Brian campaign text line is 64686. You can also tweet me at Guardsy on Twitter. Speaking of credit cards, a tough week for J.D. Bales, a former assistant soccer coach. Your sport. Maybe it's a future podcast. One pod- of mine. Maybe but- a future podcast guest for you. No, it could be. What's your soccer podcast called again? Oh, thank. glad that came up organically. The London Club Council is what it's called. It's me and Robbie Rosenhaus. Who the hell is Robbie Rosenhaus? We talk about the Premier League. The London Club Council. Robbie Rosenhaus was in, was in this chair about 25 hours ago. He was. With Gopher Football Fan Line, Quick Lane Bowl edition. Uh, but J.D. Bales, as I mentioned, is a former assistant soccer coach at Bridgeport High School. And he was arrested 12 days ago. Okay. On the felony charge of theft of property. After he allegedly spent over $5,000 of the school's money at the Men's Club of Houston while working for the district. What is the men's club of Houston, you might ask? (laughs) It's a strip club. Okay. And Coach Bales apparently spent five grand there. He was released after posting a $10,000 bond court record show. He resigned as a middle school special ed teacher in September after the district discovered he spent $5,455.81 of the district's money at a strip club while attending a coaching clinic. He initially told the school to bank... Uh, the charge was fraudulent before investigators discovered evidence indicating otherwise. I would imagine it was him walking into the <laughs> men's club of Houston on surveillance camera. He eventually submitted payment for the charge. However, due to the overwhelming evidence in the case, I believe it was prudent to submit the case to the Wise County District Attorney. Bridgeport Police Chief Steve Samford wrote in announcing Bale's arrest. Reading from a New York Post story here, once an indictment was handed down, a warrant for Bale's arrest was issued. His re- resignation was accepted during a September 11th school board meeting with the district saying that it had been investigating, quote, allegations of misconduct regarding the use of district funds. He was hired in 2018, worked as an assistant football coach as well. Not coincidentally or coincidentally, fortunately, earlier this year in May, six of his players were arrested Over allegations of hazing other students as young as 14, the players who were arrested allegedly stripped other students of their clothing, filmed them, and made them repeat demeaning and explicit phrases. So tough holidays here. Tough couple of months for Bridgeport High School. Tough month or tough day for the family of a six-year-old boy who was left on a flight for the Christmas holiday to visit his grandma and was put on the wrong plane. Did you see this one? I did. And I know the airline, too, has a lot of... It's a festive airline. Spirit Airlines. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, we can name them. Yeah. They're being named. It's not like the airline's being kept secret. Um, the six-year-old boy's grandma, Maria Ramos, showed up on Thursday at Southwest Florida International in Fort Myers, Louie knows it well, to greet her grandson. Sitting there waiting to see her six-year-old grandson. It's the holidays. It's Christmas. What's better than going to visit family? Six-year-old wasn't there. 
I ran inside the plane to the flight attendant, asked her, where's my grandson? He was handed over to you at Philadelphia. She said, no, I had no kids with me, Maria Ramos told WINK News. She was in Fort Myers and got a call from her grandson from the airport in Orlando telling her that he had landed. In a statement, Spirit Airlines said the boy was under the care and supervision of an airline's employee the entire time. Even though he was incorrectly boarded on a flight to Orlando, once the mistake was discovered, the airlines let the family know, the statement said. The statement from the, um, or the airline said. The statement from the airline, we take the safety and responsibility of transporting all of our guests seriously and are conducting an internal investigation. We apologize to the family for this experience. We just played Home Alone cuts last week. I just watched it for the first time this holiday, too. First time? Front, front to I know the bits. I knew the story. But I never have watched it start to finish until a couple days ago. It was good. I understand that the travel season is chaotic. Yeah. Airports are messy. And I think there's some storms out east that are going to make things messy here. There's going to be some more cancellations in the next few days as people try to get to and fro after these holidays. But you got one job, man. Put the kid on the right plane. What? How does it get messed up so badly? At least Florida. I mean, was it just labeled Florida on the boarding pass? And well, this one looks good. Was it not a sold out flight? Most flights are sold out at this point. There's not a lot of empty seats. That was part of the problem. Like Home Alone 2 nowadays really couldn't happen because you can't get on the wrong plane, really, because most seats are taken for, spoken for, and they have the records and everything that goes on. With that it. blew my mind in Home Alone 1 where they just went, yeah, anything in coach, whatever's available. And yeah. I went, what? I think it did kind of used to be like that. I mean, I was a kid when all that was happening, but it was a lot different back then. Yeah. I mean, you still had to go through security and do all those things, but yeah, you could you could bounce around a little bit more. And if there were singles, you usually flights weren't full because airlines weren't running it like that. Now every seat is packed or you've got standby. Like you, you could fly on a half-empty plane back then because they didn't care. Money was cheap. Money was easy. Reaganomics, the whole bit. We were, everybody was living high off the hog. Hadn't had any of these financial crises, or at least any of them recently. Now, yeah, it's a lot different now. But I just, the boarding pass must have just said Florida, and they said it's close enough. Just get him somewhere in there. I think he's supposed to go to Fort Myers, Bob. I don't know. Let's get him to Orlando. They'll figure it out. It's not that far. Oh, I just can't even imagine. Yeah, I mean, spin zone. I can't even imagine. If, if you're going to put him on a wrong flight, that's the best one to be on. Right? Still a driving. The fan has learned the Florida is a long and yeah. very big state, bigger than you think it would be. But, I mean, that's not the. Obviously, it sucks. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> if you had to pick one wrong flight, that would be the one. That he didn't end up in Bozeman, Montana? Yes. Yeah, he, he didn't end he up in Seattle? Yeah, he could have ended up in San Diego. How did they board the wrong plane? Must have given the wrong ticket or wouldn't they get caught at the gate? Yeah, we have a lot of questions. That's the text that just yeah. came into the Bradshaw and Brian KFA and text line. I have a lot of follow-ups for Spirit Airlines on this one. <laughs> because Why do you charge for drinks? There seem to be a lot of checkpoints, that you, a lot of boxes you're supposed to check before you take an unaccompanied minor. Have you ever been in a, were you ever on an unaccompanied minor flight back in the day? Hundreds of times. Hundreds? Hundreds of times. I've only, I remember one. And I remember, like, I can't believe they're letting me do this. This yeah. is crazy. But I had, you know, you wear the tag and the people, yeah. are, you're basically got the scarlet letter, like, don't let this kid do anything without an adult, more or less. Yeah, but, with uh, with the dad being in Atlanta. I did I that suppose. many a time. So, yeah, you'd get the you get the little necklace and you are basically were under supervision the whole time. And did we talk about it? I remember it coming up. We talked about it somewhere along the line that you used to be able to mail your kids. Like, it used to be. What? Yeah, maybe it wasn't you and I. Maybe it was Max. I feel like someone just texted that in. At least they didn't send the kid via U.S. Postal Service. There was a time, and people can look this up. Look it up now. If you don't feel like you believe me, you could mail what, your they kid. poke air holes in the box? No, they did it. You put the kid on a train. <laughs> but it, you, it wasn't like you bought a, a train ticket as much as you just mailed your kid, and it was U.S. Postal Service, essentially. It was like 15 cents, and that's how, like Maria Ramos, you could see your grandson. Instead of putting him on a Spirit Airline flight, they would just drop off at the train station. Somebody would be on the other side, and that's what they would do. Look it up. So I'm going to Google shipping children via FedEx, and if it's my last day here at the station, now maybe I'm don't do you. FedEx. Just okay. just say 
could did you used to be able to mail children? <laughs> I feel like that's not any better. Well, you look that mm-hmm. up. Okay. I do want to get to Jair Alexander. He's been suspended for this upcoming game against Justin Jefferson and your Minnesota Vikings. Rob Demosky, ESPN reporter, with this story. I mean, everybody has this story, but I'm reading Rob's. Uh, three days after he anointed himself as one of the Green Bay Packers captains and then made what Coach Matt LaFleur called, quote, a big mistake by nearly botching the call <laughs> after winning the coin toss, the team suspended him for one game. Brian Gutekunst, the GM, in a statement, the decision to suspend a player is never easy and not one we take likely. Unfortunately, Jair's actions prior to the game in Carolina led us to take this step. So as the resident Packer fan here, as the guy who's wearing the Green Bay Packers sweatshirt, Yes. Explain exactly. I knew nothing about this until today. What did Jair Alexander do before we hear from Jair Alexander himself? So I guess, he, well, he'll, he'll explain some of it, but he, there were three captains announced. He went out for the coin toss and uh, he, he said that we want the defense on the field, which as you know, doesn't mean that you get the kick. It's not like Madden where you hit right. kick. It's, and that automatically assumes that you get... You need to say, I defer. Correct. You defer. Which, by the way, is it time we just get rid of that? I mean, just say if, if whoever's kicking. Why is there a sounds like so the you're, It sounds like you're defending Spirit no. Airlines. Uh, no. uh, by the way, uh, somebody just texted me, and I wish I thought of this. And if... Well, I'm, I'm assuming Russo wants credit for this. He's going to join tomorrow. It's Spirit Airlines. You have to spend $25 to have your kids delivered to the right airport. <laughs> it's 10 to just get them on a plane. Yep. It's 25 to the right airport. So you defended Spirit. Now it sounds like you're defending Jair Alexander. No, I'm not. And, and also... It's and, the system's fault is what you're saying. Well, I think it's... He shouldn't have been out there in the first place. I'm just saying, on another note, I think that's a weird technicality. But also, LaFleur said, and I didn't get this part. We may hear from him later in uh, Top 5 at 5, but... That it's not the only thing is the is why he's suspended. It's not just one thing. It's a cavalcade of things that are going on behind the scenes. Well, I'll say this, so. and let's just hear from Jair because he was asked about it. What were you doing exactly? It was against the Panthers, who they beat, right? Barely, it sounds like. Barely. So Panthers are plucky. Don't sleep on the Panthers. They've won two games. Very, very yeah. plucky. He was asked about it earlier this week on what happened, why it happened, and I got to say, I think the reporters did a good job of letting him essentially, um, I guess, out himself for being one of the biggest clowns in the NFL. I'm Aww. not sure, as if we didn't know that already, but here we go. So were you supposed to be a captain? Because the team announces the three game captains, and you were the fourth, and you called the toss. What happened there? Oh, yeah, I mean, you know. It's only suiting, you know. I don't think Coach knew I was from Charlotte, you know. So, so you just did that on your own. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, it was like a, you know, the guys backed me up, you know. So they, they knew I was from here. Did you realize you almost made a big mistake on the call, though? What I do? Well, you said we want to go on defense. Yeah. Which, in theory, could they could have said, then you're electing to kick to to uh, kick off, which you would have lost the opportunity then yeah. to receive in the second half? Yeah, no, I told them that, uh, I said, uh, I want I want our defense to be out there. And they all looked at me like I was crazy. I'm like, I mean, it's pretty simple what I said. Like, I want the defense <laughs> to be out there. They're like, you mean defer? I'm like, yeah, I guess. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he did. The, mic, the mic was on. And I, oh, I, well, yeah, he, he heard you. Heard that, yeah. <laughs> oh, really? No, he was just like, defer? I was like, yeah. Everybody was like, yeah. Like, everybody was laughing. I'm like, what y'all laughing at? It's pretty obvious what I'm asking for. So did anyone say anything to you when you got back to the no. sideline? <laughs> Why would they? I just don't even have, like, words, Brett, as you can tell. This is your guy. You think yeah. he, you think he can stop Justin Jefferson one on one because you, you you apparently feel like you saw that in the last year or so, which he can't. It's been proven. He needed some help, which is fine. I'm not even saying and that. That's but, just smart football. But that you're you right. But, but then to come out and say, well, I mean, I shut him down. No, you didn't. The Packers did. Like I just if the shoot if if it was reversed and this was a Viking, I feel like we would be saying the same things. Like, what are you doing? What are you saying? Like, at what point does it just get to be too much where it's like, as you said, it's always something. He's being suspended for allegedly a couple of different things. And it's just like, I have I get it. Everybody lives in their own little world. He seems like he lives in his own universe sometimes. You know what Jair is like? He's like that friends that you stop, you have in your friend group, but 
you have no idea how he functions or how decisions <laughs> like how are you still alive? But then somehow he probably has like straight A's and but what can't else figure is it out. exactly like <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. it's it's it. But you keep him in the friend group because he's got vibes. And I'm sure if he was a Viking, I'd probably be ripping him. So most likely, yeah. So well, there's that. He will not be available to stop or not stop. Justin Jefferson and Nick Mullins or Jaron Hall, whoever we know. Speaking of living in his own world, I haven't seen this man in it seems like a decade. Pat Kessler is in the house. He's going to join for the 5 o'clock hour, including the top five at five, which is coming up next. Anything you want to tease? We'll get into all the injury reports, Vikings, Wolves, Wild.